you know what? This time around, I might need to stop saying that I'm not an artist. In this stretch, I mostly finished art. I made some really good stuff and some not so good stuff. But I did manage to get some of the randomization done. So now the game's able to pick well. Before we get into that, my name is Helper Wesley. I make games and Fortnite videos. So to start in order of how things happened last week, I need to start with the art. If you've played my old game, Atomic Trail, you'll know that the events happen and it's this big blank screen with some text that comes across it, and occasionally there's some kind of image that goes along with it, and it's just a lot of text. Well, I want to make it so that when an event happens in this game, you get mostly artwork and some text on the side. Because a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So to make this work, I want to set it up so that whenever you get an event, or maybe not all events, but some events, it'll pick three different images to pair together to kind of set the scene. So like, what's happening, what the room is like, and maybe some other kind of condition. But to do that, I need to have images I can show on screen. That was one of the cop-outs that I made with Atomic Trail. Because everything was text, I didn't need images. I think there was a minigame where you would get jump scared and you'd have to shoot something within a time frame, and there was an image for that, but it was not very good. So I wanted to make some new images. Starting off with something that I thought of right off the bat, which was a hand reaching up, just like a skeleton hand sort of mimicking the hand coming up for the Dead Space logo. While doing this, I had to look up what a hand looked like without skin, because, shocker, I don't see that very often. So I looked up some medical diagrams of what a hand looks like, just the bones, and got to work. Starting off with the rough shape, like you would for most things, and then pared it down bit by bit, cutting off segments of it to make it the right shape and size and everything for bones. Me, obviously, forgetting what they look like, I had to look again, so that's twice I had to look up these medical diagrams. And by now you've probably noticed that there's something wrong with this image. Uh, it took my third time, count it, third time, going to check a medical diagram to realize my hand didn't have fingertips. Like, not fingertips, but like those, the third bone on all your fingers? Yep, I somehow didn't notice that. But after getting the hand shaped and giving it the proper amount of bones, I re-angled some of the bones to make it more of a reaching out to you kind of hand instead of a just a straight hand. And then I tried to add some shading and stuff. But they're really thin pieces to work with, so adding shading just was kind of weird. Especially because I'm going with a 99 by 99 canvas. It was a bit tight to make any kind of shading. And then all there was to do was shade it a little bit and give it that fade out at the edge of the darkest color, like I did with the asteroids. And it came out really good. The problem is though that this took me like an entire evening and I want to make, I don't know, 20 or 30 of these things? Images that you can use to set the scene for an event. So this is going to take a while. Hopefully my attention span holds up. But then I tried to make some more 99 by 99 pixel art. And this time I wanted to go for something a little less highly detailed. I can always add detail to these later if I feel like it. But if I never finish the game because I get too bogged down with the little things, then it doesn't matter what they look like. So one of the conditions for the rooms is cold, right? There's going to be creepy and cold and mold covered and I don't know, religious, I guess. Whatever the word would be for a kind of room that would have crosses and things scrawled into the walls like you see in some horror movies. Whatever that word is, that. Anyhow. One of the descriptors for these rooms is cold, so I wanted to make some snowflakes. And then I realized, it's actually really hard. So I made the best snowflakes I possibly could, and jumped ship and ran over to try to make an eyeball. Like an eyeball to signify that somebody is watching you, sort of thing. That could be used for a host of different kind of events, just interactions with people, or paranoia, or whatever. This for a reference, for some reason I decided to look up the eyeball boss from Terraria. So I just kind of freehanded it. Just trying to give it like some veins coming down from the sides 
And this one came out a little more cartoony than the hand did. The less shading going on, the more cartoony it looks, I guess. At the beginning of this video, I said that I am reconsidering calling myself an artist. And so I'm going to blitz through some of the really crappy art that I made in between these things. There was this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Yeah, somebody commented on an earlier video talking about how good I was at art. I don't show you guys the terrible stuff usually. I do show the funny terrible stuff, but stuff that's just bad, I usually leave out of these videos. And then because I want this to be like a digital representation of like a computer display. So it's not an actual computer display, but it's a reinterpreting of what that would look like if there was no monitor, if that makes sense. So I started off by making this very simple electrical line tracing thing. Basically, it's double the thickness of the last one I made in the last video because I realized that thin little lines come out like spider webs and not like wiring. So I copy and pasted those down to kind of border all of the icons to like separate them into this row is north, this row is south, this is west and east. Someone in our Discord suggested that I use the engine itself to kind of add the effect to this, turn this into a mask, and then drag this over the mask. And I was like, that sounds like a wonderfully smart solution, but this was too late. I was already well too far into the project to change course now. I was already tediously adding color to the whole damn thing, frame by frame, and while it was a major pain in the butt, I do really like the way that it came out. Especially after I added some bloom in engine. You'll see there when it crosses by the letters, it it's it's just it looks good. I don't usually revel in my own art, but like, yeah. So now I just need to make everything else look that good. Anyhow, not to burn myself out on art, I decided to jump ship and work on some coding, where I gave the characters names, all of them starting with J for no good reason, and then I created some modifiers and three different kinds of events that would happen based on where you put your crew to. So if you click to end turn, and the game picks somebody who's in the base, it will say that they spend time in the base, doing whatever task they're on. If they're in the hallway, it'll say that, and then if they're in a room, it'll say that. But the rooms also have a modifier. So your crewman could be going into a depressurized room, and then that room for the whole game will be depressurized. Which right now doesn't mean anything, it's just text on a screen. But at some point I want these effects to do something. Maybe the depressurized room hurts your player when you go in there. Or maybe if you go into a pristine room that hasn't been touched, it has a higher chance of giving you all these resources. But speaking of resources, oh boy, this game gets complicated real quick. There's eight or nine different kinds of rooms, eight or nine different kinds of resources, five tasks to do in base, four directions to go on the ship, four different sets of rows for rooms to find on the ship, and then each time someone gathers a resource, it picks one of two, and then picks between zero and four based on their sanity for how much of that resource they should get that round. And when you do the math, there's a whole heck of a lot of things that can happen that need text to tell you that they happened. So yeah, two more videos left. We'll see how that goes. Atomic Trail was also a big project, but the key difference is that the whole crew was always together. In this game, being able to split them up and perform every kind of actions you want to, it makes the whole thing a lot more complicated than just walking a straight line and having things happen. Wish me luck. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, be sure to do the whole YouTube thing. And a huge thank you to my patrons. Because of them, my coffee cup is full. And as always, the links to all the cool places that I hang out are down below. And if you decide to click on one, then I'll see you there. <laughs>